Now I'm excited to say that we have tonight here Dave Brown, great story, um, a great man of God, a great husband, a great father, a great friend, a great brother, and he is going to share how great God is. You know, sometimes what God does is that he allows things, and sometimes people say, why does God allow things? Why does God allow things? In this world, you will have trouble. And evil is in this world, and sometimes we don't, we don't know how we're going to go through it, and we don't know why, but God is able. Mm -hmm. And so, Dave, we, we, this is so powerful a story because I know you personally. And for the first 13 years of life, you lived with your father, and you lived with your grandmother, and that situation with your father, describe your early childhood there. Thank you, Dr. Pat, for having me on the show tonight. Um, my early childhood uh, with uh, my father uh, was a very dysfunctional um, development stage in my life. Um, a home should be an incubator where uh, a child feels safe, feel protected, and feel uh, the protection of a father and a mother. Um, but, however, my father forfeited that. He abdicated that responsibility. My father was, um, a very, was an alcoholic. As a matter of fact, he was well known in the community and they named him Rumhead Brown. <laughs> so the stigma of that as a young boy, you know, wow. uh, carrying that stigma as my father, uh, you know, as, as the son of a rumhead, um, really was not a pleasant one. Um, as a result of not having a father, you know, within the home uh, to give this instruction and guidance and just to lead us in the way that we should go. Um, there was two of us, my brother and I. Um, I became you know, at a very early age, uh, you know, I realized that I was going to school, but I didn't really understand the purpose and the value of going. I just thought it's just some place to go. There was no one to guide me to say, you know what, go to school because this is what you will become and this are the benefits of so, going. So you lack the guidance even through your school age. And I'm wondering if the rum, the, the word rum, I think they, the alcohol in every nation is called rum, isn't it? Okay, we're just wondering if they understand it. And so yes. you lack the guidance of a father telling you, go to school, why, helping you in school, and just being a guide for you, that was never there. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, I got my marketing degree when I was about six which means I was going to the market with my grandmother. Not as we know it now, marketing seems to be a prestige title. But for me, marketing was going out and, uh, you know... And selling and in the selling market. By yeah. himself. And selling And what, what were you selling? You mean food? It was a food market? Yes, it was a food market. So we'd get up early on a uh, Friday night and prepare ourselves with the provision from the land. Uh, you know, the things that we cultivated, yeah, yeah. and we would take it to a location every Saturday morning where wow. I would do the bartering and the selling, and then, wow. uh, yeah, so. Uh, but, do, but do you see now how God is, right? It sounds like negative, you know, you were how old when you were doing marketing? <laughs> yeah, my marketing degree what, how, what was probably about uh, 10 years old. From 10 years old. So yeah. he had to go to the market with his grandmother. He had to be selling the stuff for all of that. But that was training, you know. School, sometimes we think that school has to be in a classroom. But you know, life is one big classroom. And as long as we come out at the end, you know, in power and in success, then everything worked together for good for those who love the Lord yes. and for those that are called. And I tell you, this is a great story. So this little boy had a father that was an alcoholic but the heavenly father was your father because he was guiding you and guarding you along the way. And you said that there's sometimes when your father was so drunk that he became physically, it, it could be physically hurt you. Yeah. Absolutely, very much so. As a matter of fact, um, the rage that happens because when he's coming home after, so, you know, uh, what he would do, you know, he would uh, just go into the city square and, um, you know, with his machete and they would just hire him for a day's work. So as soon as he would get uh, that day's pay, um, both him and his other colleagues would just go to the bar and again, um, they would spend it off and they would drink to the point where they would, you know, um, coming home at night. I remember my dad coming home at night or I hear the sound of him because whenever he's coming, there's always the sound, the intoxication, wow. and they start to sing. And the, the dogs would literally have to, had to 
you know, uh, pull him home because he was just so wow. much out of it. Uh, mm. And so, you know, they brought him home. Mm. And, um, you know, then he would uh, be carrying with loud noises throughout the night wow. and uh, yeah, just knocking the door down to come in and just, just violent um, aggression. And did he have place. a machete at that time, coming home with a machete in his hand? Not at that time, uh, but the next day now when he sort of sobers up, uh, you know, because machete, you know, they always have it with them. Yeah. That's their livelihood, yes, so you know, yes. it's always with them. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there are times when I have to, you know, face the machete. Uh, you know, and I remember one occasion, uh, you know, where he uh, literally pulled it at me, and I had to kind of, you know, um, distance wow. myself. So wow. absolutely, yeah. So you're talking about um, alcoholism that l l went into the situation where a father could have killed his son. If God wasn't there and mm -hmm. and what I'm hearing you know Dave Brown is that God is with us so much yes. even when you don't acknowledge that he's there you don't know he's there it's not like you're you're figuring this deep thing but obviously God protected you through this and you can imagine a little boy hearing the noise of a drunken mm -hmm. father coming home with a machete and you know they're knocking down the door and the dogs barking and the dogs dragging him home every night living with that then the fear that can come upon you the fear mm -hmm. for your life what is he going to do tonight mm -hmm. you just don't know how he's going to react to the night so that could have really affected you greatly and so you you lived with that until you were at what age I lived with that until we were 16 when uh, we migrated to Canada. My mom, actually she came before, she was uh, in, in the 60s, she came and um, you know, she started a very minuscule job um, and she managed to uh, you know, uh, uh, gather enough money uh, to get some tickets and then she, she sponsored it and then she sent for us and so at uh, 16 I left um, Jimmy, my, home. my home and uh, came to Canada. So, so for 16 years, a baby, a boy, a teenager lived in that abusive situation. And I know this man and I want to know how come he wasn't wounded to wound others. And one of the things you had, you had a praying mother yes. and a praying grandmother. Absolutely. So they were always powerfully praying for the boys. I must attest to that. As a matter of fact, um, when we came here, uh, and I must say to to, to mothers, um, you're listening, uh, you know specifically, um, there are times when you have to become the father, you have to step up and become the priest, and uh, you know, and so don't feel that the fact that there's not a, a man in your home that you don't have the covering, because I believe God will give you the grace to uh, you know to become and the spirit of the father that is needed. Um, so, yes, so, you know, I came and my mother, and, and I really attest and, and, and give God thanks for her, uh, because many nights um, I would go out and I would come in and I would hear the door open and, and, you know, what I didn't hear my father saying, I hear my mother doing, and I would hear her praying and she would calling me by name and calling my other brother by name and she would just be covering us wow. and uh, so you know I can I can still hear those memories mm. of, of, of a praying mother wow. uh, you know that was crying out for us Wow yes so so mothers what um, Dave is saying here is you find yourself in a situation where you're a single parent but your power your prayer is powerful enough yes. to preserve you and your children and you know, God, God gave, surrounded you, and of course you got involved with the church, so mm -hmm. that you literally were, it had a church family for the support as well. Yes, well, it does take a village, um, you know, to raise a child, and um, you know, the, the church family was was very important because it was in that atmosphere I began to see the modeling of fathers, mm -hmm. and um, then I, you know, I look at, uh, as a matter of fact, it, it. it you know, it starts to awaken me now that, hey, there was a, 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 a missed blessing in my life. Something is not right. Um, I see how fathers would respond to their children, and I see the model. And I, you know, then all that emotionally charged memory from the past starting to, 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 to come up. Now I start to realize that I was missing, I was missing something. Something. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know th th this is very important. All the emotional charge memories came up, and this year later in your 30s now, yes. you know. 
and yet and one of the spirit that really you had to fight was the spirit of fear mm -hmm. right and that so so all of that brought fear and then you were attacked when you are later with a spirit of fear and didn't even understand where it came from right. so you started to have um attacks with fear started to attack uh, with fear uh you know um I, I i wasn't able to sleep i remember um you know and at first of all i i tried to figure out was it a, a spiritual thing was it something that was happening naturally um and i tried to work with all the dynamics because i didn't know where this spirit was coming from as a matter of fact it really um got up bothered us me at one point where I was even so afraid to sleep that I asked my wife to watch my breathing that night, uh, lest I fall into, uh, you know, um, a situation where I didn't wake up. So I was really attacked by fear, jump, jumping up out of my bed. Uh, you panic know, attack. Panic attack, yes, absolutely. Um, driving myself to, to, to the doctor. I remember one year it was Christmas and I was so uh, overwhelmed by that. I drove myself to the, to the doctor, uh, you know, because I just felt that something was going on. Yeah, so... Wow. Stricken by fear, absolutely. Wow. So a spirit of fear come, and we want to welcome those that are still joining. Susan Toledo, June Doyle from Trinidad, Karen, welcome. And so a spirit of fear attacked you, and then how did you get delivered from that spirit of fear? What what happened? Did you have to go to a psychologist? Did you what what happened? How did you get delivered from that spirit of fear? Well, I I sought help, and but nothing you know, seeing at the time, uh, you know, was to be helping. I went to doctors and they thought maybe it was some, you know, something to do with my uvula in my throat. Maybe it was causing me that attack. And so he removed it. But yet, you know, they sent me to sleep apnea and all that different, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. try and deal with it. Mm -hmm. But but that did not help. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, begin to pray about it. And um, I remember one day I came to you for counsel and uh, you know we, we, we prayed about that spirit. I mean, it was that spirit was even so much that it even destroyed my my ministry um, and the call that God had. And uh, you had to literally, you know, put me back in focus. And uh, you know, it was through prayers and um, that God was able to, to to deliver me from that fear. So 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 what are we hearing here? It means that when you are facing a battle and it's too much for you, get help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get help, you know, and he did the practical thing. He went to doctors, but doctors can't heal everything mm -hmm. if it's spiritual. Right. And they tried to do surgery on the throat. They went through all the sleep, sleep apnea. They went through all of that, but there was a spiritual thing that had attached itself to this boy living with a father coming home drunk every night, abusive, swearing, violent with a weapon etc living with fear and sometimes things happen during the journey and we suppress it mm -hmm. so we don't get to think about it but it is silent it is a silent weapon that at some point in your life the enemy might trigger and you know it triggered it for, for Dave Brown and when I heard about it not only did he asked for help but his wife asked for help as well and he said dr pat you gotta help us you know you need to, this is torment and so we had a meeting in my office and i diagnosed what it is because diagnosis is very important because you you you, you have to know what you're dealing with and you have to even know the name of what you're dealing with and so this was a spirit of fear so we dealt with it in, in my office and he was delivered completely from that spirit of fear. Yeah. So we, we, want, we want to thank God about this. But, you know, Dave, I want you to look in the camera and I want you to just bless mothers. Because I tell you, man, it's mm -hmm. your mother, because of your mother that you were kept, you know. And, and so to <laughs> just, just tell mothers again, I know you mentioned it, but just share about the power of a mother. Mother, I know it's very difficult, very challenging to sometimes raise your, your, ch your children um, without the support. There's sacrifices that you have to make. Um, and, uh, you know, but, but I really believe that um, God is going to give you the grace and will give you the grace. Um, my mother, as a single mom, raised two of us, both of us. As a matter of fact, there's three of us. There's my sister um, from another side, but there's all three of us. And we're all prominent. Um, you know, there's two pastors that came out of, uh, you know, my, my family, my brother and I. 
Um, and, uh, you know, God has really blessed us. Um, you have the power, mothers, through your prayers um, to be able to pray for your children and to be able to, to cover them and to watch over them uh, because God is the one who watch over his word. And he's already said about the seed of the righteous, that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered and the seed shall be mighty upon the earth. So if you have a child right now that may be in, in rebellion and you feel, you know, that uh, there is no hope for him, I'm here to say that there is hope because the situation that I came out of, and it just didn't stop there. When I came here, uh, it was very difficult as well. I watched my mother struggled, uh, you know, to, to, to meet ends meet, work in two jobs, but she did not stop praying in spite of what she was doing. And she made sure that we come to church and that we were under a spiritual covering. Yes. And so we, we, we welcome Claudia and Nikita and all the ones that are coming again. Um, but we're talking about a, a single mother that had, you know, have two children, two boys growing up in a very violent, abusive home. And yet God came through. And, you know, his father, the, even, even though he came through it with the help of God, being mm -hmm. in... A church family that really helped him so he had role models there as fathers and he grows so at the end of the day if you want to change your life you can change it absolutely and at the end of the day you cannot just decide because of where I was is where I'm going to be in the future I'm sitting here with a, an example of somebody who literally changed your life you know, this gentleman is married, he has three beautiful children, and he is a professional. Um, his children are in college and university. He literally protected himself and kept himself in spite of that. And when the enemy surfaced to destroy him, God put him in a family mm -hmm. that says, you're not going to destroy this yes. young man. And, you know, we prayed and protect him from the spirit of their fear. And then he had to meet his father. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about even how, what happened when he met the, his father. Because when you look at the seven Kyle pillars, the worship, Dave Brown chose God to be his source. And the Bible says he puts the lonely in families. Mm -hmm. He sets you in place. It's, it's like a diamond ring where you setting, the setting. He will set you in place with, with like a diamond ring because you're so special to him. So you will be covered, protected. And when you need support and when you need somebody to come with supernatural wisdom in mm -hmm. your life, to know how to deal with the situation, and then for you to rise up in the power that God gives us to deal with spirit of fear and crush it yes. and declare that this will stop now. You know, it, it, it's just amazing. But then the middle pillar is honor. Mm -hmm. So how does a man like this that was dishonored by his father mm -hmm. and yet decide in honor to honor his father? Mm -hmm. Not to curse his father, but to honor his father. So tell us what, what you had a decision point. Absolutely. My dad then finally got an opportunity to come to, to, to the States where he was living. And um, I had an opportunity now that, that it was much closer. Um, one day we got the family together and decided that we were going to go down to visit him. Um, he was in a nursing home at the time. And uh, when, um, when we, we, we got there, I really wanted to, to honor my father in front of my children by setting an example to them. Because if I can honor a father who was, uh, you know, did not abusive, abusive mm -hmm. how much more the principle now for them to see, uh, you know, the, the principle of honor. Wow, so, you, you, uh, you are getting this. <laughs> this man is saying, because he's a man of honor, he wanted to even show his children how to walk in honor. To have that grace about them because honor is a grace mm -hmm. because honor you honor yourself you become honorable when when people act out um, in because of a circumstances then it means that you are not honorable and you're not walking in honor yourself so Esther was married to an alcoholic husband mm -hmm. too but she kept her honor so the bottom line is that regardless of what we go through we have to preserve our own Absolutely. honor right Absolutely. and we will be judged for our own honor and we can't even make the excuse of our father right. so to for that honor principle that you know honor your father 
Yes. Which is what the Bible says. Absolutely. So you decided you will meet him yes. in Florida yes. with the kids. That's right. And the wife. Yeah. So five of you went so down. So the whole family went down and uh, got to the home where he was. And, um, you know, we got inside and um, uh, we met him. And I think it was for the first time that the children were meeting him. And, uh, you know, I introduced him to them. These are your lineage. These are your seeds. I'm, I brought them here so that you can see them. And, um, you know, we went together in a little special room where it was, and we were all there. And, um, you know, for a moment after, I, you know, I brought him before the children. So did he say anything to the children? Or he didn't speak much? He didn't what? speak much, but, you know, he, um, in the way that he could, you know, the little way that he, he, he knew how to show, he, you know, he, he, he held them, he touched them, and asked a few some questions. And, uh, um, but the, the, the really time now, the pivoting moment was, um, after, I, after I asked the children to leave, I wanted to have, uh, have a one-on-one -on -one moment with him. And I didn't go down there to judge them, to judge my father or to condemn him for the mistakes because I know a lot of what happened was because of lack of even training from his father. So I can generational. see where generational <laughs> things wow. were happening. Somebody has to, some, but we can't stop the cycle. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the thing. Absolutely. His, he's a reproduce from his father to That's become right. like his That's father. Right. And so you know this is the way he was brought up and therefore wounded people wound people, but you're going to stop the cycle. So I'm going to have to break the cycle. So after I, 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 I met with my dad and, um, you know, we started to talk and I let him know that, uh, you know, he certainly was not the father that I, uh, that I wanted. However, um, I'm here to let you know that I, that I love you as a father and I'm here to honor you and I'm here to, to you know, to bring your children so you can see them and be able to, uh, you know, uh, um, see who they are. And, um, and so after I was talking with him, the, he wasn't able to express, but he broke down and he started to cry. Wow, so let's stop there. The power of forgiveness. Yes, absolutely. It is amazing. So he's stopping this cycle of curse and generational curse through the power of forgiveness. Yes. So you didn't go there to tell him off what you didn't do and what you didn't do. You went there to act like a man of honor and set him free Absolutely. because you were more powerful than him yes. now yes. to set him free. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. Wow. And then I, after that, we, we uh, you know, I, after that time together, um, I prayed with him and I hugged him for that moment and I thought, here it is, a thing that I long for. Him. I hugged him. Wow. And what I long for as a as Let's a say it again, boy, you hugged him. I hugged him. Hello. And what that embrace, what I long for as a little boy, mm. I was now be able in my fifth forties, late fifties, to give it and to be able to receive it oh my. from from my father. My and God. um we Did both, he hug you back? He hugged me back, he broke down and I he knew hugged you back. something was he happening. He put his arms around you? He did. Okay, yeah. so he hugged you back. He oh hugged me back. God. Because, you know, there was just, I believe that the power of forgiveness, you know, it doesn't matter how hard yes, you are, yes. um, doesn't matter how hard you are, how bitter you've been, um, once someone reaches out in love, mm. you know, it, it demands a response. Whoa. And you respond in love. Okay, well. stop there again. Love mm. demands a response. Woo! Mm -hmm. that, that, that's okay. a good thing to, to, to say. Love demands, mm. not ask for, but demands a response. Because most of the time when we're fighting our battles, we're fighting in the same weapon that the person used. Mm -hmm. The weapon is, is wicked, so you're going to be wicked back. Uh, you know, the curse, you're going to curse back. Mm -hmm. But he responded with love. And the Bible says perfect love yes. casts out fear. Absolutely. Love is a weapon. I do a teaching on the 12 spiritual weapons in spiritual warfare. And one of them is love. Because because God so loved yes. that he conquered the cross. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Talk about Jesus on the cross. And love said, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we are now Christians. Yes. And we can now call God Father yes. because of the power of love. Absolutely. And so love cast out fear. Cast so out not fear. only did the love heal the father who would have been fearful to meet a son that he was never there for, but the love to also cast out fear from Dave Brown yes. also, so that he can go into another level of wholeness, yes. because we go from glory to glory with ever increasing absolutely, glory. Absolutely. And his father cried. Yes, wow. Absolutely. Uh, wow. And so what happened after that now, um, you know, we, we left uh, the home and it was shortly after, um, that I got a call stating that he had to go to the hospital and it was Father's Day when I called him and uh, he was in the hospital 
And so I asked them to call me back as quick as possible to let me know what's going on, update. They did um, call me back about uh, a week after and uh, with bad news um, that my father had passed away. And I was so glad that I had the opportunity to be there wow. uh, to be able to release wow. my father and for us to and release together. yourself and release myself <laughs> absolutely because you know it's not just a matter of release his father he released himself because mm -hmm. his father died soon after yes wow this this is powerful and the topic is here how to overcome rejection in relationships that's the topic here yes. How to preserve yourself because really we don't choose our lives, mm -hmm. we don't choose our parents, we don't choose our circumstances. But how do you come out of it not wounded, yes. not defensive, not like a, a, a gasoline that is ready to be triggered at anything mm -hmm. because of the bitterness, because of all of this. This could have really damaged you, mm -hmm. you know. But and the enemy did try he with did. the spirit of fear. But of course God had already covered him. And what, what, what we want to talk about, here, let's talk about four things that you can take away tonight. To overcome rejection number one rejection is real people and we have to be real right mm -hmm. so number one I would say acknowledge its effect on you let's not kid ourselves here you know um, there it has it's an effect you cannot go through this situation and it's not it, it does not affect you it might be suppressed mm -hmm. it might be in the subconscious but a spirit of fear, the Bible says Satan is like a roaring lion, just seeing who to devour. So any circumstance where he sees that this is ripe to trap people, this is ripe to wound people, mm -hmm. he will do it. And here it is, this young man survived. And sometimes through survival, you don't even feel anything. That's right. You're just surviving. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've spoken to people who are, you call them very hard. And they don't feel because feeling is pain. So you just survived and then you protect yourself in that because you that's your protection. Mm -hmm. And so acknowledge, acknowledge, you know, David was a man, a powerful king that we read about. And he was distressed. He lost everything. He lost his family. And he was also a victim of, yes. of, of, of being ignored by his father. His father thought he wasn't worth anything, but David prospered because God was with him. Amen. And so what we're hearing here is that God will become a father to the fatherless. Right. He's a mother to the motherless. Mm -hmm. He's a husband to the husbandless. He's a wife to the wifeless. Yes. He's a friend to the friendless. <laughs> he is God. Yes. And he will be for you whatever you need in your life Amen. and number two protect yourself and encourage yourself mm -hmm. because one of the things dave did was to survive in this you know they ran around they played and when the father wasn't there you had the brother to pray with and they they just live a plain life etc so he was protected at one in 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 his own way just to survive mm -hmm. and encourage yourself and the next thing is Refuse to identify yourself with your rejecter. Mm. Now, this is very important yeah. now, right? Because he could have identified himself with his father. Mm -hmm. His father was called a rum head. It was a slang in the village. This man that's going to come drunk yes. every night. So he had a reputation and as Dave said, a stigma that he had to grow in, grow, grow out of. Yes. Because this is what his father was known as, the drunk of the village mm -hmm. do not identify with your rejector That's right whoever rejects you you don't have to identify yourself with them and you know because you if you want you can take on their spirit mm -hmm. and you begin to live with that shame and we're going to deal with shame on this pro and one of our programs because I want to talk about secondhand shame, hmm. which is worse than regular shame. Because hmm. how do you deal with that? Right. But he did not identify with his father to become his father. He identified with God. Yes. And that is the key. Absolutely. And you know, when, when I'm working with all these young people that I work with all the time, a lot of them have no father. And I have to make sure that they know that they're made in the image of God. They're made in the likeness of God, mm -hmm. that God is your father. Mm -hmm. I am telling you something. Every human being on planet Earth, God is your creator. Yes. 
and he really owns you. Technically, he owns you. You might reject him because it's not rejection of the Father, nor is you rejecting your Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, and that he goes through this rejection all the time when we ignore him. But you don't have to identify yourself with, your, with the way you are brought up. You choose who you want to be. Yes. And the next thing that we, number four, learn from rejection. So Dave became a great father. Learn from that rejection. What are you not going to do as a father? Yes. What are you not going to do as a husband? What are you not going to do? Learn from that rejection and do not become the rejector yourself. Mm -hmm. Remember, God is with you. This is so powerful. This is a story. And tonight, people, you're hearing the solutions and now hope is there. Mm -hmm. Hope again, as Dave talked to the mothers, mothers, if you're there, yes. you know, one mother, work, um, you, you wrote me last week saying that even as we heard last week, your kids were cursed in your womb, but you're a mother and your kids are, are now growing and you're, you're pressing through. And so life has things that we just don't plan, but mothers, there is no greater prayer on earth than the prayer of a mother. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I think it. Yes. Just like they said, there's no greater love that is close to the love of God than a mother's yes, love. Yes. They will say, you know, it, it says even if a father forsake you, a mother doesn't forsake yeah, you. Absolutely. You know. So I want you to feel his love to, to, today. And I want you to, you know, some of you are sending questions. So you can send the questions that you have and we will answer them. But you're hearing today, I want you to remember God loves you. Mm -hmm. And that whatever you find yourself in, it's not over until you decide it's over. Because God is going to be there waiting to turn things around. This, this is what I want to leave you with. All things can work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called. And everybody is alive for a purpose. And we want you to know that God is with you. God is with you. And you need to join me next week for the conversation next week because we are going to be talking next week about finances and how a little African girl moved to another nation without money and your one relationship from moving into another level. A coach found her and she became a secret millionaire in the UK. People, what am I saying? All things are possible with God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, wow. This, 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 this is so exciting. And I want you to help me spread this message. Join somebody else to come and, and join us next, next week. Let's not keep this to ourselves. And if you have a story, I want to hear from you. Because I'm going to be streaming next week, you know, you know, all the way to UK. Because I am now getting people from all over the world who have a powerful story. Because we want to learn from one another. And at the end of the day, God is greater. Whatever you have to tell me, what I have to tell you mm. is God <laughs> is greater. <laughs> and you can send me your prayer requests. Because we have a praying army. We have a Kyle army. Wow. Apostle McLennan, McLaurin, Emmanuel McLaurin from St. Lucia. Thank you for joining us, sir. And wow, we're going to bring a team to St. Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting. We have people from all over the world. People, join us next week, but don't keep this to yourself. I need to, to, to you to help me to spread this new and also tell me the topics that you want us to discuss because I want to touch you right where you are. I want to know what you need so that we can talk about it and I have a live person that will come and share that God is greater. And we want to thank Dave Brown thank <laughs> for coming tonight and for sharing so openly yes. and for this is what you call success. Because nevertheless, but God. Yes. What, what, what a story. Yes. I, I am so excited. <laughs> I have to rub his shoulder here because I get so excited to know how powerful God is. And that's why we call it Kail Conversations. Mm -hmm. It means the powerful, great glory of Jesus Christ can make you a champion. 
So God bless you. And remember, come to Kingdom Enforcers Conference, May 15 to 19. And we thank all the viewers that are here. And please know, send us your questions and send us your prayer requests. And join in the conversation. Be a part of the Kyle community. Because God loves you. And remember, we are a Kyle generation. generation.